Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna talk about something called the staircase phenomenon in the heart. So with that, let's give it a go. So before we get into the meat of this video, I would like to make an important announcement. And this announcement is that in order to understand the contents explained in this video, you should have a good understanding of the following concepts. So the first is the fast action potentials, which take place in the ventricles. If you don't know what these action potentials are, go to my cardiac electrophysiology playlist and watch my video on them. And the second thing is excitation contraction coupling in the heart. If you don't understand how this occurs in the heart, go to the heart physiology playlist, which is the playlist you should already be in, and watch the video on it. This playlist contains this video that you're watching now, as well as the video on excitation contraction coupling. So with that, let's go into the video. So we're gonna begin by talking about what the staircase phenomenon actually is. So let's just say we have a heart, and this heart is connected to a stimulus generator. And the generator is going to send in impulses, which are equivalent to action potentials. So this is sort of like the pacemaker of the heart in this case. So the stimulus generator is going to send in stimuli at a certain frequency. The stimuli are going to cause ventricular fast action potentials, which will elicit contractions of the ventricles. And this computer is going to measure the tension that is produced by each heartbeat. So let's start off with a slow constant frequency. And when we do that, what we see is something like this. So if we were to pause the experiment and just look at this part of it, what we see here is that during this frequency, the heart is producing the same tension all throughout because the frequency is the same. So it produces a certain amount of tension and it does that for each continual beat. Now, if we were to abruptly change the heart rate from slow to fast, what we would see is something like this. So if we were to abruptly change the heart rate to a faster heart rate, what we would see here is that the tension produced by each beat would gradually progress upward until we get to this point. And then if we were to abruptly change it so that it was slower, what we would see is that the tension would start climbing back down again. So this is the staircase phenomenon. So the staircase phenomenon is the progressive rise of tension after an increase in heart rate. So remember that in the experiment, we had a, the heart starting off at a slow heart rate. And then at this point, we abruptly changed the heart rate to a faster rate, which caused the tension to climb up. And then after we got to a certain point, we brought the heart rate back down abruptly, which causes the tension to fall back down again. So it's this progressive rise in tension after an abrupt increase in heart rate that we increase the tension progressively and it looks like a staircase. So what causes the staircase phenomena? Well, there's two main causes. The first is an increase in the calcium content in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the second, which is tied to the first, is an increase in calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So remember, the amount of release of calcium so the amount of calcium that's released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to be tied to the amount of calcium inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So if you increase the amount of calcium inside the SR, you're also going to increase the amount of release. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus in this video as to how an increase in heart rate could increase the amount of calcium content inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And we're going to be looking at that in great detail for the rest of this video. So in general, there are three causes as to why an increase in heart rate would lead to an increase in sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium content. So we're going to talk about each of these three causes in much more detail, but just keep in mind that the first two causes that we're going to talk about are going to act to increase the calcium content inside the cytosol. So they're increasing the amount of calcium inside the cytosol. The third cause is going to use that result, so it uses the fact that the first two increase calcium content, so it's gonna use that increased calcium content 
in order to increase calcium uptake into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So the third cause is going to use the first two in order to get its effect. Now we're going to talk about all three of these causes in great detail. So let's see cause number one. So remember that cause number one will cause an increase in calcium content in the cytosol. So how is that going to occur? So cause number one is going to surround a specific phase of the fast action potential. So remember that we have five phases in the fast action potential. Phase zero, one, two, three, and four. So the phase that this cause is going to attack is going to be phase two or the plateau phase. So let's just remind ourselves of what phase two encompasses. So remember that in phase zero, we had sodium influx into the cell. And this sodium is going to depolarize the cell membrane. And inside the cell membrane, we have L-type calcium channels. And these calcium channels are going to open in response to the depolarization that occurred in phase zero. So when these channels open, calcium flows into the cell, which depolarizes the cell, which causes that plateau phase that we see in phase two. So how is a faster heart rate going to affect this plateau phase? Well, remember that a faster heart rate means that there is a higher frequency of action potentials. This means that there is more action potentials per unit time as we increase the frequency. So this higher frequency of action potentials provides a larger aggregate period of calcium entry through these channels. So in other words, by increasing the number of action potentials per unit time, you increase the number of phase twos. And as you increase the number of phase twos, you increase the amount of time in which calcium is allowed to flow into the cell through phase two. So this increase in the aggregate period is going to lead to an increase in calcium content in the cytosol. So that is going to be cause one. So cause two is also going to cause an increase in calcium content in the cytosol. So how is that going to occur? So in order to understand that, I am going to remind you as to how calcium is removed from the cytosol after the cell is going to contract. And we're going to see why we're talking about this when we look at the effect of an increase on in heart rate in, on these things. So remember that inside the plasma membrane, we have the sodium potassium pump which is going to drive a number of the processes that the cell uses in order to remove calcium from the cytosol, which will allow the cell to relax. So the first one is going to be the sodium calcium exchanger, which uses the downhill movement of sodium to drive the uphill movement of calcium, removing it from the cytosol. Another one is the PMCA, which uses ATP in order to pump calcium out of the cell. And then the most important one is Circa, which uses ATP to pump calcium into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and it pumps two protons out. So this is the most important of all of them, because remember, the calcium that is in the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum during excitation-contraction coupling, which will allow the cell to contract. So how does an increase in heart rate affect this mechanism? And how does this effect lead to the staircase phenomenon? Well, remember that when we increase the heart rate, we increase the action potential frequency. And when we do that, we also increase the depolarization frequency. So what I mean by that is remember in the fast action potential, we have phase zero. And phase zero is when you have a lot of sodium entering into the ventricles. So this means that if we increase the action potential frequency, we get a greater number of depolarizations per unit time. This means that we get a increased level of sodium. So this sodium is actually going to interfere with the mechanisms of calcium removal above. And the main mechanism it's going to interfere with is the sodium calcium exchanger. So because we have an increased sodium level in the cytosol, this is actually going to cause the two ions to switch their places. So the sodium calcium exchanger is now going to take three sodiums out of the cell and bring calcium 
into the cell. So in other words, there's more calcium being brought into the cell, and there's also a greater level of calcium that's being kept inside the cytosol. So this cause is also going to increase the calcium level in the cytosol. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the effects of cause 1 and 2, which both increased calcium levels in the cytosol, and see how they play into cause 3, which is going to increase calcium uptake into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So remember that in an increased heart weight, we get also an increased level of calcium inside the cytosol. So both cause 1 and 2 increase the calcium levels. So this increase in calcium levels means that more calcium is going to bind to calmodulin. And when this complex forms, this complex is going to activate calcium calmodulin kinase 2. And when this protein is activated or enzyme is activated, this is going to increase the phosphorylation of the regulatory protein phospholambdin. And when phospholambdin is phosphorylated, this is going to increase the activity of circa which will lead to an increase in calcium uptake inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And remember, by increasing calcium uptake into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, this means that more calcium is kept inside the muscle, and more calcium can be released into the cytosol during excitation-contraction coupling. And when you increase the amount of calcium going into the cytosol, this increases the force of contraction. So in this video, we talked about what the staircase phenomenon was, and we also talked about the three causes of the staircase phenomenon. I hope this video helped you understand what this is, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.